bank holiday weekend and we hand over to Mr L Ward now. Thank you Mr O'Brien. Good afternoon everybody. Mr O'Brien's kindly asked me to say a few words about um, this bank holiday that's coming up um, because usually in Guernsey um, we have our uh, time for liberation day which is celebrated on the 9th of May. Um, however in the UK uh, there's been a special bank holiday that's moved from its traditional place at the beginning of May to the 8th of May, and that is in commemoration, and in fact celebration, of what is known as VE Day, VE, Victory in Europe. And on tomorrow, 75 years ago, the Second World War came to an end. Um, probably one of the most bloodiest and destructive wars that there's ever been. And whenever I think of VE Day, I always think of this photograph um, and as a historian, it's a photograph that I've used quite a lot in my lessons to illustrate um, that the key people that came to see the crowds that flocked into London, um, into round, round Buckingham Palace, um, as soon as news broke out that Germany had finally surrendered and agreed terms with the Allies. And on the balcony there, we have um, the King on the far right there, waving his hand, George VI. Um, and centre stage, of course, is our Prime Minister Winston Churchill. And uh, on our left of him is the Queen Elizabeth, who later became the Queen Mother. As on her right, on the far left of our picture, is Princess Elizabeth, who is our current Queen. And as you can see, Princess Elizabeth there, she um, was a young lady at the end of the war, and she is there in her uniform. She was a member of what's known as the ATS, the Auxiliary Transport Service. And she went off and she did her duty uh, fighting to end the war. Um, Next slide, please. I think I can show. Ah. And what a war it was. Um, this is a photograph um, of a town called Heilbrunn in southern Germany. Now, I could have picked scores of different photographs of different cities uh, around uh, Europe, uh, but this one just shows how devastated the whole of the continent had been as a result of this, this terrible, terrible war uh, from bombing from food shortages and all the other terrible things that can be associated with war. Truly devastating and truly destructive. And when the war came to an end, there was a, a great relief um, amongst many. And that's no more than at home in Great Britain. And I've picked three pictures here in particular that really illustrate the kind of upheaval and difficulties that the people had to live through in six years of war. And Britain, more than any other country, had uh, spent the longest time at war. They were there right at the beginning, and it was Britain there right at the end. And we can see the young children there on the far right, and um, with their little name tags on their coats, um, being taken off to be evacuated during the Second World War. We have the queues uh, for food because of the food shortages. And then we have the volunteers in places like all the big cities. And for example, this one is, is in London. Um, ready for the to, to ward of the, the bombing raids that were attacking Britain in the early years, especially in the war. Next slide, please. <clears throat> but for the 8th of May in Guernsey, there, unfortunately, they still had another 24 hours, another 24 hours to go before their liberation actually came. Um, Jim, uh, Guernsey had spent, of course, five long years under occupation, uh, and for many of them, uh, they had no communication with the outside world, very isolated. And I think for many of us in our community now, we can maybe share some of the discomforts that these people um, would have endured during those times. But of course, we're very lucky that we have uh, Wi-Fi in our homes and that we can be connected to our families, at least uh, that way. The, the people that lived through the occupation, they had no such luck and they often relied on Red Cross parcels that would take often months to arrive. But the photograph I've shown here is finally the British delegation on board HMS Bulldog, which was um, just a few miles off Guernsey on the 8th of May, waiting for the order to sail into um, to St. Petersport Harbour and take the German surrender. So, um, of course, liberation on the 9th, but VE Day was the day before. Next slide, please, sir. Thank you. But for many people who are uh, elderly people, uh, and for those that remember, um, victory in Europe actually um, only meant partial end to the conflict that was happening all around the world. Germany had surrendered, but the war continued way past the 8th and the 9th of May, 
into the late summer and for many young people uh, and their families uh, nervously waiting for the war to end there against Japan. And this photograph shows um, the British in a part of the world called, well, it's Burma in Southeast Asia. And these soldiers are fighting through the ruins of a city called Rangoon. And so we also must remember that although victory in Europe is commemorated today, um, VJ Day is commemorated later on in the year. Now, where does this link us with today? <clears throat> we, um, we had the slide last week that showed our famous captain, our honorary Colonel Tom there doing his bit uh, to help the NHS. Um, Colonel Tom, Captain Tom, um, himself a veteran of fighting in the Far East, and there he is as a younger man. And it made me think a lot about how we can make the link to the current situation. Um, many people label this generation the greatest generation that went through the war. But I think now there is time where we can begin to think about our own generation and how we're dealing with the difficulties that we're facing. And it is now this greatest generation that is really the most vulnerable. And we must often think about what we can do to help them when we think of them. And so when we're staying indoors and when we're uh, keeping our social distances, it's this generation more than any other that we're protecting and looking after. So enjoy your bank holiday um, and take time to think of those people that are still alive, that live on our island and live around the UK and all around the world that were around 75 years ago and think that when we're staying inside, we're doing them good service by doing so. Thank you.